This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni and pizza. Production services by Sidekick Media Services. And listeners like you supporting us at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast and it is a special edition. We, of course, like to pre-record a few uh, special deep dive topics here over the holidays. So you still get some some awesome cast goodness in your feeds. And uh, we are here. We got a. this was actually a special request by uh, Alex out in California, Alex Cars. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, work with him over the years, and, and he does some cool stuff. And he's with our, you know, our Sorgatron Media a uh, 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 loop, I guess, on the Slack and stuff. And I was looking for ideas, and and he brings it up every year, and we never really kind of pulled it together. And finally, it was like, hey, I want to see WordPress versus Squarespace, you know, compare and contrast. So we have with us a panel today that has uh, worked with both, in all cases, WordPress and Squarespace. Sometimes. You know, putting the new stuff on Squarespace, putting the new stuff on WordPress. Some of us, like myself, have almost just left WordPress for reasons, and we can get into those kinds of things. First of all, we have on the line from, uh, we will call it as of the point that this is going to be released, the website formerly known as Bold Pittsburgh. Amanda Narcissi is with us. How you doing, Amanda? Good. How are you? All right. All right. And then we also have with us of Yin's Love Barbecue. And of course, the 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 wonderful cl- let's call it a classic podcast of should I drink that? Can we do that? Is that is that a good moniker for sure. that? Okay, we, we we can do that. <laughs> Doug Durda joining us as well. How are you doing, Doug? I'm fantastic. How's everyone? Excellent, excellent. And then we also have it's been a while since she's been on the camera for one of these shows, but she's also the one that handles most of this stuff with Psychic Media here <laughs> these days. Uh, Missy's with us. Oh nope, that's a website. There it is. There's the button. There's the, I I for I lost the Missy button. There it is. You get so used to me not being in the studio that you just default yes. me to a website. <laughs> yes, exactly. You're like Burp. there it is. Goes. Um. So you and, and so, so let's first let's go down the line. Uh, um. Let's go down the line and talk about what what is everybody's experience. Like just what what's your what's your uh uh, uh roll call of I've done. You know, these sites, these sites, these sites. So, so people kind of know the backgrounds before we get into kind of more of the deep dives. Let's go and down the down the line. Let's go alphabetical order. Amanda, you first. <laughs> I actually just popped it in the chat because I remember I do have a Squarespace site and a WordPress site running at the same exact time. <laughs> okay. All right. So my experience is, is that I do work on both platforms. I've designed on ba- both platforms. I've handed off on both platforms. I've taught both platforms. Um, so I've pretty much so worked really heavily in both. I, I have like features in both and everything that I love. So um, yeah. Great. Great. And, 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 and when we talk about like websites that you've done, we're talking, you know, of course we, we mentioned like, like Bold Pittsburgh's one of them, right? And uh, and things like that, right? Yes, I have Bold Pittsburgh, um, Narcissi Creative, which is my freelance company. And then I also have designed for clients. Um, for example, right now I'm working with a client called Growth Circuit. Um, and we design sites for clients um, that they have. So I'm like their hired on graphic designer freelance. And they they have clients so i've worked across the board with them and i'm actually working on designing their site right now excellent excellent doug how about you oh man let me think here so i i've been running wordpress well before uh should i drink that started in 2006. it's uh, one of the early iterations of wordpress i started working on Mm -hmm. and i i liked it right away so i i i installed it Liked it as a blog. I uh, use it for a personal blog that I had going. Uh, I, I've had one website running since '97, but not on WordPress. It mm-hmm. was what was it? Uh, movable type at one point, <laughs> I think, is what we had. I forget, like I was posting manually. Then I went to movable type. Then I went to something else. Uh, then it was WordPress. 
Uh, but what I really liked with WordPress was that uh, I was a web programmer at the time, so I could customize everything, which I, I thought was fantastic. So I liked that. And since then, uh, like I said, should I drink that was on that Yinsla barbecue or Yinsla Uh Almost every project that I've worked on has been WordPress up until about, uh, I want to say about three years ago, maybe. Uh, I started to switch clients over to uh, Squarespace uh, just because of simplicity and they they wanted more hands they wanted me you know kind of hands off unless something breaks help us uh so i i thought that was a, a pretty nice platform so i've i've probably got about three years experience on squarespace mm-hmm. awesome and then i guess i guess locally for us missy like i guess it starts with me right let's <laughs> go so, because we i started with like mayhem show and things like that and we we went i think we i was building dreamweaver websites uh, well, actually, no. I first started with Front Page, Ex- Front Page Express. Was that the Microsoft one? Front Page Express. That was the free one. That was the yeah, free yeah. one. I, I yeah. got my hands on the main one, and then moved to like then Macro Media Dreamweaver. Uh, I was using templates, and I, I'm sure I had a lot of sleepless nights with that. that none for clients, though. Uh, I don't think I had anything like that until I had. Well, no, I had, I had a little bit, but um, and then moved to WordPress because it just seemed so much easier when we discovered that. And then on to Squarespace. And before uh, Missy was taking over some of those, um, I just had a flag in the ground that if I did anything for a client, it would not be WordPress again. I want to get into a little bit of that. <laughs> but but now we do a little bit of everything with that. I, mostly mostly with Squarespace for new stuff. But I, I, we've, of course, um, um, had to um, deal with clients. And Missy, you can get into that briefly here. Well, here, uh, right? if, if, I can, if I can jump in here... Mm-hmm. Um, my first experience with WordPress, and our, our guests are going to appreciate this here. Mm. Uh, 2008, mm-hmm. PodCamp Pittsburgh. PodCamp Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> See, told you guys would appreciate it. Um, so yeah, that that back in 2008 is when I started doing website stuff because mm-hmm. you know let's let's do some website stuff. And like Sorg just touched upon, uh, we've moved a lot of our clients over into the Squarespace realm because. And, and we can get into this discussion a little bit more uh, across the board, but Squarespace was a heck of a lot easier because you didn't have to worry about a lot of the the back end stuff that could break a website and having somebody else handle it. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, m- moving moving things over to that was, has been easier. Um, but I, I like to see that WordPress has actually kind of changed the game a little bit because I was actually in a WordPress site for a client the other day. And it resembles quite a bit Squarespace. It is. It is. They, they started doing like something like a year ago or something, mm-hmm. right? So, um, and it kind of just kind of rolled over into it. And because I don't, I, I, the couple of WordPresses I just do for podcasts, I got to say, are probably not the most updated. Uh, so, so when like some things kind of like roll over like that, it kind of surprised me a little bit. So, but yeah. So, so let's get into um, what. First of all, what's kind of the difference? Um, I don't. I don't know who does anybody have a good kind of me, uh, uh, metaphor for this? You know, uh, I always take like WordPress is the thing that you honestly, you know, when you're talking versus uh, WordPress versus Squarespace, the thing for me is WordPress. It, it, if you need more control, because in most cases that I've dealt with, it's that WordPress is installed on a server. You pay for a server, you pay, you install the WordPress, which is free for the most part, and then it's got plugins, it's got all these things, it's kind of more manageable, and you can kind of get into the weeds with it a little more versus Squarespace is kind of more of a cloud uh, experience, right? Is, is that a good kind of breakdown, you guys think? I think that's a way to break it down. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm looking at it from the way that I explain it to clients is Squarespace is more of an easy managed thing. So when I sign up for Squarespace, they manage the hosting, they manage all of the the infrastructure through Squarespace. Like you just said with WordPress though, I have I'm in charge of installing whatever plugins I want to have. So if I want to have a specific feature, I have to go install that. Mm-hmm. Uh, in addition, I need to make sure that the plugins play well with what I have set up for my basic website for WordPress. And I also need to make sure that the plugins play well with each other. So there's a lot more hands-on with WordPress in, in that capacity. And I'm talking about the, you know, 
the adult version of WordPress that you do host elsewhere, not the free WordPress that you get, you know, a limited number of pages and a limited number of things that you need would have, then have to upgrade to. Um, I'm, I'm talking about the actual developer end of WordPress that, you know, a, a website development company would, would utilize. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of my my take on it. I'm curious to see what Amanda's thoughts are since she works specifically between the two of them in that capacity as well. I, I always ask how the client wants to be involved because like I always I hate to say it, but Squarespace is kind of like websites for dummies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you literally can Google it and get the answer of like how to do something mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. literally mm-hmm. like that's one of the things I wrote down notes of like why I love the two and what I hate about the two. Yeah. Um, but one of the things I wrote about Squarespace was literally you have a how to pages of like how to add an image how to add a link, how to make a blog post, how to import a YouTube video. There is literally, it's literally mapped out for you on how Mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah. Whereas WordPress, you are, like you said, in the weeds, you have to have a little bit of experience in things like SEO and how a website works, what HTML looks like, CSS looks like. You kind of have to know those things or be willing to learn them um, when you're in WordPress. But I also think that there are a ton more features with WordPress than there is with Squarespace. I mean, Squarespace is getting them, but I feel like now that I've switched my main site bold from Squarespace into WordPress, I'm finding that I can do a ton more with the site in WordPress than I was able to do it in Squarespace. Mm -hmm. And that and that's supposed to, that's supposed to be a positive and a negative. Like you can really get in there on on WordPress and have that flexibility, but also and this is where I, I had a nightmare experience. Has anybody had a night have a, a WordPress nightmare or Squarespace nightmare? I feel like it'll be more WordPress. But I did a website for um for a company and and you know set it up for them, did the format, you know had everything that they wanted in in it. Handed it off. I think I sat in on a call once, like, or I intended to do several. Like that was part of the plan, and they never got to happen for one reason or another. Um, and like we had a, a, you know, had to sit down. I was like, "This is how it works," and this, this, and this. Um, they never used it. They never updated it. And when they went to update it, they couldn't get into it, and something happened to it, and and it got up. Obl- and in order to fix it, basically they obliterated it and put a new website up. Because there was no plan for maintenance, and and they weren't in a position to hire us on to keep an eye on it, and therefore, like something happened to it, who knows? The site, you know, and the site just kind of broke. And instead of even calling me to fix it, they like their hosting company just obliterated it. And there was like, well, there's no coming back from this, <laughs> you know, kind of that situation. So that was kind of like the last draw for me. Uh, for for using WordPress, at least with clientele, because, you know, so many are build me a site and then walk away. And I feel like you can do that easier with Squarespace than you can with WordPress, and especially a company like that, that like the website is the very last thing they're thinking about. Right now, like, I'm, I'm going to counter that mm-hmm. because this is one thing that I do like about WordPress over Squarespace is if I hand something off to a client and they screw something up. In WordPress, I can go back to a previous version. This is true. And I can recover based on that to the most part. I mean, there, there have been a couple of situations where it's been kind of hairy and you know mm-hmm. I've, I've had to redo some things. But for the most part, I can go back. Mm-hmm. Squarespace, I cannot. If somebody mm-hmm. deletes something, deletes something, it's gone. So true. But I'm saying in my case, it's, it's like the content, mm-hmm. you can roll back, right? But I'm saying they broke WordPress. Oh, no, no. And I understand that. Right? That's what I'm saying. But. If there's no backup functionality on that server and we get into the weeds at this point, again, we have to talk about servers and logging in and C panels and those kinds of things. Yeah. If you're getting already your head's kind of spinning on that, WordPress is probably not for you. Precisely. <laughs> Unless you're going through like WordPress.com. That more or less kind of acts like a, a, a Squarespace. But if we're talking about that flexibility, I think you need to have it on a server, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Right? Correct. And that's where it comes into shop for the correct Yes. Client, the yes. correct host. Yeah. Like when I switched bold back to WordPress, I literally went to a couple of my blogger friends who are who hosted on WordPress, and I or hosted 
on different companies. And I said, tell me about your hosting companies. Mm -hmm. And they were everything from Bluehost to GoDaddy to um, who I finally settled with, who was Big Scoops. And they're not a well-known company, but their customer service is excellent. Like I asked the dumbest questions, like, how does your FTP upgrade upper work and all this other stuff? Like I've asked the dumbest questions to them that were easy to find before, but being out of WordPress for so long, I couldn't find them. And literally they were like, sure. No, they answered me within 15 minutes mm -hmm. in an email mm -hmm. and a chat saying like, this is where everything is. This is how it works. If you want us to move your site for you, we will like free of charge oh, from wow. Squarespace to WordPress. Like they were a, a, exceptional when they come to customer service. So that's where it's important that if you are going with that type of hosting, you have to do your research on who it is mm -hmm. because they will hold, some companies will be there for you. And other ones like I'm finding GoDaddy is completely hands off now. They don't answer their emails. <laughs> I just had a friend's site break. Um, and she was on, you know, emails and phone calls to GoDaddy and they would not answer her. Mm -hmm. They just couldn't answer. And her site was down for weeks. Yeah. Over it. So it, it just kind of depends on who you have the relationship with. And, and I think that's the thing I have. I I was not on good servers. We were, you know, it was a cheap one or whatever they had or some somebody that the, they do other things on that server and it doesn't specialize in this sort of thing. Um, so it was kind of pigeonholed into these bad situations. So there, GoDaddy was another one where I, I again, a lot, most of our stuff was hosted on GoDaddy. And, and after some bad experiences, I started pushing it off into some other ones. Uh, even the server I've been on for like 10 years for all the podcast WordPress uh, is one that Rob De La Creta from this show uh, 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 recommended me years ago, right? And I've, I've been pretty okay with it, and they've been pr pretty helpful. And that surpass hosting, by the way, I'll give them a shout out. So, um, what about you, Doug? You, you know, are you have you run into any like you know issues like that, or uh, you know, you know, what, what's your experience been on the, in that case? So, uh, I've had a love hate relationship with both platforms for mm -hmm. for a while. Um, with Squarespace, there there is a way to back up on Squarespace. The problem is restoring is a pain in the butt. Yes, uh, because I, I've had it set up with a plugin uh, because the the one client wanted to have it uh, have their own local copy. So there's a plugin that so you can download it. Uh, but if you don't know what you're doing, trying to add it back to your site, if you screw something up, mm -hmm. um, you're you're not going to get much help from Squarespace. I will say though that overall Squarespace's support is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've had to call them a few times, or even actually, I called them once for an issue. Uh, it was a server issue. It ended up, it was across the board. It just wasn't put out yet. Just timing on that. Uh, and then emails, I've I've had quite a few replies to the emails. Uh, I haven't had a ton of problems. It, it was mostly admin stuff mm -hmm. uh, because there was a problem with billing or you know, like, so, like something really minor. And then uh, any questions I did have, though, uh, that I didn't really want to check with support on their their FAQs are fantastic and like Amanda said that the so their support they have videos for everything so which made it a lot easier for me to sell Squarespace as a solution because I said oh you need support well here's your file I, I wrote up a help file for this one that I did they said you know it's I, I don't want to have to bother you for updates it's I'm not going to do a ton of stuff to it but if I have questions like how do I add this can you give me directions so I just sent them the link. Mm -hmm. And said, here's the, you know, here's their help file. And they said, wow, this is, this is perfect. I'm going to go, and this will update. This is a living document along with the rest of their support. Uh, so if, if there's anything new that they roll out that you may not know about, like I haven't actually developed a site in Squarespace in probably about, uh, it's probably been a couple of years just because I, no one's been on, <laughs> heavy on demand for websites. Uh, and I, I do it, you know, it's one ops for, for friends and for a few businesses now and then, but I, I've had great. Um, great experiences with with Squarespace when it, it comes to that. Now, for on the WordPress side, oh dear lord. Okay, so the, <laughs> I like to explain WordPress as uh, like you're, you're the mechanic who wants to make mods to your car that you're about to buy, mm -hmm. and Squarespace is more of I just want a car to get me to work and back. Don't tell me how it runs. I just want to turn it on and let it go. That's that's the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a really good WordPress, analogy. WordPress, uh, WordPress is, uh, but <laughs> as a web guy, as a 
former professional web guy, now marketing guy or whatever. I love that I could go in and I could just fix things on my own because I knew how to fix it. Mm -hmm. uh, you do rely on a ton of third-party tools, though, which if they don't stay up to date with security and, and everything else, you know, it's, you're at the mercy of all their plugins because yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. one person updates their plugin and it messes up your site, you're going into maintenance mode. And if you're not the one that's actually supporting that site, you're going to get a phone call like, what the heck is this that I'm in maintenance mode? Mm -hmm. And then you got to go in and try to figure out, first take that file out, was the dot .maintenance file, uh, and then uh, figure out which plugin it was that just tanked on you. And yep. it's, I've had problems too with, uh, the you know, if I didn't update the version of PHP fast enough, you know, it's it will, I'll have uh, system me memory errors. And like, I just, I have a lot of problems, but it's problems that I don't mind because I, I'm a tech guy. So I'm like, all right, well, let's, let's figure out what's bogging it down. What's the process that's, that's really cramping it. But I, I do love that there's a lot of tools on, that, uh, that are on WordPress that are not on Squarespace. And Yen's Love BBQ is a great example of that. One of the only reasons why I haven't moved that from uh, WordPress to Squarespace is I can't find a mapping tool that will do what I need it to do. And the directory that I have listed for, so I have on the site, a directory of all the barbecue restaurants in Western Pennsylvania, which is over a hundred now. Uh, and Amanda's going, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me hungry, but I, I know was, exactly what you're about. that was one of the reasons why I left Squarespace was when I did articles on like the top 20 places to have whiskey, you can't put all no. those restaurants in one map. Mm -mm. Like in Squarespace, you can't do it. So I have the same. I had the same complaint. And you can't like you can't customize it enough to to fit your needs. Like you're stuck with the Google API, Maps API, and like just have a you know a, a marker somewhere. Mm -hmm. Whereas what I needed it to do is I wanted to add photos and I wanted to add you know more information than just what was on there. So I found a tool through um, WordPress. I found these. I don't even remember how I found these guys. Uh, but it was like a young group of guys that were starting up uh, a Google Maps plugin. So I tried it out, and then I kept going back and forth with the developers. I'm like, this doesn't work. That doesn't work. I like this. It would be cool if you had that. And whenever I need support, though, they have a forum that I get an answer within 24 hours because they're like their latest release, their spacing really jacked up my map, and I didn't like the drop downs. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they said, oh, well, here's what you have to do. So like that's a cool feature, but the the everyday person is not going to go into a PHP file or a CSS file and, and change yeah. things. No. Mm -hmm. and it, Actually, everybody better not be going into a PHP file. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's funny that you're talking about that because we recently moved, well, recently, the last couple of years, we moved the Wrestling Mayhem show or Indie Wrestling. We moved Indie Wrestling from a WordPress hosted, a WordPress site over to Squarespace. And yeah. the reason that we did that was because one of the plugins that we had that was installed broke the site mm -hmm. like entirely broke the site so people would go to wrestling mayhem show.com indie wrestling or indie wrestling.com thank you yes and thank you <laughs> See? and i'm a webmaster guys um but, but they would go to the indie wrestling site and it would not be it wasn't there like they they couldn't go anywhere with it it was just giving a complete blank yeah it, it was one of those this is broken this is the final straw we've been talking about this and we're pulling the trigger and yeah we had you know between sorg and i we have enough knowledge to have tried to figure out mm -hmm. generally speaking what was going on with the site and even we we were having a hard time figuring it out mm -hmm. so that was when we were like all right we're, we're gonna go ahead and pull the trigger on this we're just gonna move it over to squarespace where we won't have to worry uh, about it and the problem was we had to rebuild the entire back catalog of all those titles that we've done over the years with them mm -hmm. or brought in or, you know, whatever the case may be. I can't even think of how many, how many titles we have on that show, on that, on that site. So, um, yeah, it was a nightmare, but again, but we also haven't had a, this site has disappeared moment. Like really that hasn't been a quick fix since. So like, and, and that is something that needs to just run and it's literally a monetizable thing. Right. So, yeah. and it's just like, I need one less thing to worry about. Which which is also nice because I, I do appreciate the Squarespace mm -hmm. with that, that, um, you know, we, we do DVD sales mm -hmm. and we do video on demand and we do, you know, video sales in, in multiple varieties. So we're able to, Squarespace just takes care of that on the back end for us. Mm -hmm. And WordPress, it was, okay, I'm, I'm using this plugin and then to find out that that developer didn't update or didn't you know they, they developed a new plugin for something so now i have to add a new plugin mm -hmm. and when i add the new plugin 
it doesn't work well with the version of WordPress that I'm running or another plugin or another plugin that I <laughs> have. And so it was yeah. it, it the problem actually that, that was with that. We found out that it was a plugin issue is that one plugin was installed mm -hmm. that we needed to have in order for our to, to utilize our shopping cart. And that one plugin is what was breaking everything. So when we were going into update things, we had to we had to shut off that plugin, update whatever we were going to update from everything else, and then reactivate the plugin. And that was the workaround that we were using for a while. And then just finally, I think it got to a point where that just didn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. So that was ultimately the decision why we moved off of WordPress for that site. Um, but it's kind of interesting how you have that differentiation between the two platforms. And, and there are some things that I prefer to use WordPress for. Um, just because it's it, it like we've talked about it's it's easier to customize things it's easier to to manage things as long as you know what you're doing with it. Right. I will have to say that if I think if I do another client site like my client site right now um, for Growth Circuit they were like we want WordPress because I gave them the option when we had the conversation mm -hmm. um, and they're skilled in it and they know it and it, enough to work in it afterwards. When, if and when I leave them, I've now been them, with them over a year, so I don't I don't know when that will end, um, if it will ever end, because um, I really love working with them and they love they we we make a great team. But um, I I feel like if I was to do another client site, like a different client, like another blogger or a photography site or whatever for anybody else, I would heavily go on Squarespace. Um, but I think because it's my site and I can control it, like WordPress is better for me. And, Makes um, sense. we were talking about like the maps plugin was it mine right now is rank math, like the plugin that reads my SEO. So this plugin will take your blog post and analyze it for SEO mm -hmm. and will give you a ranking from zero to 100. And it will actually tell you what's wrong with your post and why it won't rank high on Google. What was that called again? So it will actually, what's that? What was that plugin again? It's called Rank Math. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. So you want to kind of gauge the sites to be like 70 to 80. And none of mine are complete 100 because like literally that'll create some weird flags. Um, but like it, it will basically tell you like, you don't have your, and you make a keyword, like you put a keyword in it and you'll tell, and the keyword will be like, and the actual plugin will tell you it's not in the title. It's not in the headlines. It, your piece is under 600 words. So it's not good. Um, add a photograph with the keyword in the background. Like it will literally lay out the hmm. SEO for you where Squarespace won't do that. Squarespace, you're like grasping at where your SEO is failing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And their SEO is all over the place. Now, granted, they've gotten better in the last few years. Like in the last few years, SEO on Squarespace has gotten a ton better because they have had more users and more professionals use it. But this for me it was one of the top five reasons why I moved bold, especially off of something that I want high SEO. I mm -hmm. want somebody when they search Pittsburgh to see bold Mm. And on the first page so that was the first like it was one of the top reasons why i was like all right i have to take it off squarespace because it after six years it wasn't giving me high rankings mm -hmm. no matter what i was doing no matter how much research no matter how much i wrote into the meta into the photographs all their different like places that they put it the seo was not high mm -hmm. at all um, and this was definitely a toll that already I've seen. I mean, I have only five or six articles converted over and already are seeing a difference. Nice. nice. So it, it, it's, it, 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 that's a toll for me. That was a move that made me think I'm going to move it. And, and also the disclaimer, cause we know, we know people that, I mean, I think Josh Sager was one of them that like they would like, if there are coders that can work with WordPress, that can create an entire design and structure around the WordPress platform, right? Like that, that high customers. But I think generally when we're talking to the people on Squarespace versus WordPress, we're not talking about people that know what CSS and, uh, you know, and, and all those and PHP files are right. You know, I mean, I think, I think most of us are from the era 
that uh, 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 Doug, I think you probably are. Uh, I'm not sure about you, Amanda, where where we started building the websites with HTML, right? And, and built from that. And, and, you know, so 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 going into WordPress, like we can go in there and fix things manually, right? Versus and Squarespace has actually a, a good I, I, I haven't talked to a high end coder to see what they think about, it, but there is functionality in Squarespace for somebody to code into it things that they need. There's HTML sections and it, but it, it seems like um, and I haven't gotten too into the weeds on it. I just kind of know I can paste code for like a podcast player and things like that. Right. Uh, so 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 it's kind of like where where you're at with that. So again, we're kind of, I think we're generally talking more the middle of the road. I want to put a website up. What do I do for this other thing I want to do kind of people? So, right. I want to do it so I can write a blog or, or talk about barbecue or, or something like this, you know, versus, versus I want to create an entire entity from scratch. So when I whenever I, I'm talking to people that want to build sites or want me to help them with something like I have, there's uh, two people who have recently said, Hey, I, I know you used to work on sites. Can you help me out? I, it's, I always bring it up as, okay, like, I think Amanda said this earlier, like, all right, what do you want to do with it and how involved do you need me to be? Do you just mm -hmm. want to post like blog post and let it run? Uh, just to, for those who are, are watching, because you guys pretty much know my, my background with, with web stuff. Uh, I, so I, I built my first pages in 1995 using HTML at Pit. And from there, uh, you know, it's, I got a job in 98 working for a big tech company. And from there I was, you know, I was still hand coding everything. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, I was doing it in Unix. I was getting, oh, you know, I, was, I had to tell it in your <laughs> servers. Uh, I, and I, then I had to, you know, I had to uh, fix the code that way. I used VI and Emacs, you know, for a lot of my stuff, which you know, my back hurts <laughs> mentioning that since I'm old, uh, and I remember like the, when I was building my first websites, like I had a, a notebook where I would write down the links because I didn't have a computer at home. I would write down the links from magazines that I would see from like Internet Underground. And there's a couple other tech ones that are out. I would write down what I wanted to put. Then I would take it to pit when I would go back to school and I would manually type all that stuff in to build my web page because search engines weren't that, you know, efficient yet. Mm -hmm. You're still just kind of like, Okay, let, let's see what's out there. And then uh, my I think the first GUI that I used was or WYSIWYG was um, Hot Dog, <laughs> which uh, I have no idea what ever happened to them. Uh, and then uh, probably a couple months after that, when I had that at the company, they said, no, you need to get something else. So I used uh, one of the first versions of Macromedia Dreamweaver, which I still have the book from Dreamweaver 2 somewhere in my basement because I throw nothing away. So it's stuff like that, that, yeah, it's when I, I'm looking for something for me, I'm going to want to geek out and like, I, I know I can fix something that breaks or find an answer, but the everyday person though, is like, they don't want that. You know, it's, we've, we've been working with the internet long enough that, you know, they just want to turn it on and see it run. They right. don't care about how it works or why it works. They just want it to work. And that's the same thing with most uh, technologies or you know, even most commercial products that are, that are used. Like it's, we're at the point where I don't care how it works. It just works. I just want to turn it on, have it run. I don't care about the rest of it. Whereas we're more like, ooh, how's that work? Mm -hmm. I'm going to break it. I'm going to reverse engineer that. <laughs> because we built, a, you know, our generation built a lot of the stuff that's out there now. So we're just naturally curious about it. And I, I don't want that to lead into like a, a discussion about the movie Hackers, but it sounds like I am, but I'm not. <laughs> but it, no, it's true. I mean, like I... I took the first HTML class at AIP um, when they taught it at, for the bachelor's graphic design program. So I was that first class that for graphic design anyways, because they later on did a whole web version. But like, I remember just sitting there coding my very first class in like 1999 uh, HTML one page long, like that was it. And then they taught us Dreamweaver the second four weeks of the quarter. But like, for us, yes, it's a geeky moment. Like we know how things work, but if, if it's the, and that's okay. what, for example, that's why I kept Narcissi Creative on um, Squarespace because literally that's when I finish a graphic design project, I put it up there and then I forget it. Mm -hmm. And if somebody wants to see it on my resume, because that's literally the only place that that 
uh, website is posted as my resume, mm -hmm. then they'll see that. Like, mm -hmm. I don't care about the SEO of that site. I don't care about anything on that site. It's literally my portfolio. It's so I don't have to carry around the big portfolio bag anymore when I walk into a job well, interview. You got me. I can literally just hand in my resume and there's a website that shows what I do. <laughs> but it's a set it and forget it thing. It's I don't maintenance it. I Here's, literally yeah, just yeah. put up a project and forget it. So we should Here's, go to the Wayback Machine and, and take a look at your early work. Absolutely. There's not too much early work on there. If you click on it right now, like if you were to bring it up on the site right now, it's mostly new stuff. It's a lot of the photography I do at Bold. It's literally, I just did the map for barrel and flow. Um, and oh, so that's you did on that. there. I did. I did the map that they put in their app. Nice. Um, so when you were walking around the, the festival, um, I, I made that for that. I, I, I so. love that I, I love that I checked out like artwork that you did and didn't even know it was you that did it what, because I did <laughs> I did a little bit of streaming work for them that day and I was bringing up the app and trying to figure out some things out and, and, and realizing that so that's awesome that's awesome it, uh, it, Missy wanted to say something I want to make sure she was sorry the zoom the zoom lag I think has been cutting her off a little bit <laughs> well, that's, that's okay um, I just wanted to appreciate the fact that the three of you learned coding like straight up coding mm -hmm, mm -hmm. me on the other hand I came in so late in the game in comparison and given my background not anything having to do with anything website stuff i'm more of a visual person so i had found when we were doing the podcamp site again back in like you know 2000 whatever uh i had found a site that i would type some rudimentary html into and it would show me live what it would look like based on what i was coding in order so that I could fix it. And the nice thing was, was that it was like a, a split screen with it. So that if there was something that I couldn't entirely fix in the code itself, I could visually make it look the way that I wanted it to. And then it would adapt the code accordingly to what I wanted it to do. Mm -hmm. And then I would be able to copy and paste the code that was essentially Frankenstein halfway between, you know, stuff that I had written as well as stuff that it wrote for me. And then that's what I could drop into the the WordPress in order to keep it from breaking things. When Macromedia did that, that was like a game changer for Dreamweaver. Mm -hmm. I I went nuts because I didn't have to keep saving the file and uploading it to a server. Mm -hmm. It was giving me a live preview, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is who who thought of this? This is great! Someone's been listening to me complain." Well, and <laughs> now I look at it like, "Yeah, I could do that on my phone." Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. But but that's just the thing is like, I, I appreciate that all of you literally did this stuff as, as part of like school and work requirements. And here I am like, <laughs> I'm the slacker that's just going to go over here and just kind of, you know, do, do, do hey, it. You're walking, over here. <laughs> you're walking straight in with your English degree. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. But we had to do it because nobody else knew how to. Yeah. Right. yeah. So yeah. we just, we figured it out. Like, I, I, I taught my first web page, like how to make web pages when I was a sophomore at Pitt because nobody knew what the heck HTML was. And I just sat down and like, just looked it up. like, all right, let's figure this thing out. And like, we were building web pages. Mm -hmm. The teacher's like, oh, this is kind of neat. We could communicate with everyone. I'm like, you're the teacher. <laughs> like, Do I get extra credit for this? No. I, oh, I, yeah. I, I, would, I, I was the kid that sat in the back of the, the class and screamed, oh my God, I forgot a colon. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I, I didn't comment that out. Broke and I, oh, I forgot a comma. Oh, that's the wrong bracket. Like that was me in the back of the classroom, like all the time until Dreamweaver came out. Then I was like, oh, thank goodness. We're well, coded Dreamweaver where it would show you the where you messed uh -huh. up. Mm -hmm. Because oh, you didn't I, do I that for a long time. That. Yes, those are great. Because that's just the thing you you forget a, you forget a comma, you forget a bracket somewhere, and it completely breaks the entire thing. And then you're hunting through where did I, where did this not close? And then WordPress uh. came along. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, oh man, I don't even have to worry about half of that stuff unless I'm doing a little widget or something. Okay, Amanda, you're saying? No, as a person who's now learning Python, like coding, like actively every day right now, I wow. do I do an hour, do an hour and a half of Python coding now. Um, it's a it's a whole different thing. Like it, it's so much. Like I'm having flashbacks to learning HTML, and it's mm. it's wild. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. wild to think that. But I I wanted to bring up because you brought up a great point of like when to learn this stuff, mm -hmm. and we already brought up the fact that Squarespace has all these how-to videos and how-tos and 
like a great like basically encyclopedia on how to work word or work squarespace but um i always appreciated that wordpress had a community mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. there was word Word Camp Pittsburgh, Word Camp Miami, like they had coupled with our, you know, we had PodCamp where we could always bounce ideas off of one another. They had, and I taught at Word Camp Pittsburgh number one. Um, I taught a branding class, and it was, but the community was way bigger. Like they had people coming in from like Colorado mm-hmm. to like see to to learn it and um a few of them i still follow on twitter and the videos the libraries like they all have these like nuggets of information of wordpress of where they succeeded and failed and where their code broke or this plugin's no good but this plugin is a rock star like that's something that i really appreciated about the wordpress community was that that you literally could throw up a question to these people and like they had an answer. Even with regard to the plugins themselves, um, you know, you, you go through the plugin page and it gives you information about the the person who developed that that particular theme or or that particular uh, you know portion that you're using for it, and you have access to ask them questions. There's like the online chat community where you can kind of look through what other people have already asked. But you can also look through and if there's a question, you can put it out into kind of a, a group consensus thing in there, too. So that, that's really nice with the plugins themselves as well. Um, I, I like the fact that the plugins, when, when I'm searching for a new plugin through WordPress, I, I do the search for this is what I want it to do. This is what feature I'm looking for. This is what, you know, whatever aspect I'm searching for. And it'll populate based on that. And they have... St- star rankings, but they also have comments and feedback from users that I can also kind of go through and see what problems people have had before I can, before I decide whether or not that's something that I want to choose. And it's also nice because I can install that as a tryout thing, see how it's going to work with my site. And then if I decide to not use it, I can just uninstall it or, you know, unactivate it Mm -hmm. and then see how something else works. And just kind of go back and forth with that. And usually they have they have specific information. So they'll let you know that this works best in this version of WordPress. So you know that if I don't have everything updated to this version of WordPress, I either need to update my WordPress or if it's the opposite problem that there's an update coming available for WordPress and this thing that I'm using isn't going to be usable with the updated version of WordPress, yeah. I, I don't update. <laughs> don't don't hit that update button blind. That's where it gets No, you. Yeah, yeah, definitely that's definitely where, pay that's attention to things. Some holes there. Yeah. Yeah. So um so so any other kind of tips or anything for uh anybody else kind of trying to decide? Uh you know, I guess, you know, you know, just to kind of wrap this up here, uh, you know, you, you know, Amanda, you got something? Yeah, I was thinking about design. Mm -hmm. So another thing that I can truly appreciate and something that you can draw uh, kind of like a versus against it, um, Squarespace allows you to work off of blank pages. Mm -hmm. So you literally can start with a blank page and build how you want it to look. Where WordPress, you really cannot do that. Mm -hmm. Um, You have to install a theme and then grow on it. And that can become a headache in itself. Um, Bold Pittsburgh has now changed looks three times in this move. Um, I finally went back to the original theme that I purchased and I was like, I like this theme. It's good. I could just put stuff in it um, and then add the plugins. But Squarespace, I really appreciated that if I wanted to create a new page, like um, halfway through the third year when I wanted to create the podcast and the YouTube channel and I needed to add the media page, I literally put a blank page in. And then I said... Logo, links, um, podcast plugin, YouTube plugin, footer done in those site and it went up. And whenever I put the podcast up, that that like widget would automatically update. And then the YouTube, I it automatically would update when the new video came out. Mm-hmm. But like creating that page from blank was so nice. If you have that need and that want to design it and make it look authentic and make it look more like you, Squarespace is the way to go. 
Um, whereas WordPress, it's really, real unless you're coding it from like scratch, it's, it's, you, you're not going to get that at all. Like just the game design aspect of it. That's one of the things I, I, I'm absolutely agreeing with. Uh, not that I don't agree with you on a regular basis, but when it comes to the design, uh, <laughs> one of the sites that I built, uh, the person that asked me like, how do I, you know, if I just want to build my own thing, like what do I do it, I show, I go, you click and drag. Like it's, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's that, do you want to mm-hmm. put the line break in there? Mm-hmm. Do you, you know, what are your horizontal rule? You know, what do you, do you want to add more pictures? You click and drag it. Like it's all in containers. Now there are, there's options to do something similar to that with WordPress, but it's clunky. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it's very yeah. frustrating. If you're not a, a coder, I could see where it, you would just like drop and say, I'm done with this. And, and uh, so the templates worth- that I have on Yinsla Barbecue, uh, I, I mean, I bought the template because I liked it and mm-hmm. I ran into issues right away because unless you pay that like $150 for the, someone to professionally install this for you, you know, your libraries might not be in the right spot. Yeah. Your files yeah. might be, you know, somewhere where yep. you don't know or something's yeah. not turned on, which I would love to move that site off of WordPress, but I just, I don't have that mapping tool. And the other thing is I'm cheap. Yeah. <laughs> well, then I think <laughs> because, that's, that's something we need to get into because if you go to Squarespace, they got their tiers with the features, but yeah. that's, I don't think there's any additional like markup in that. If you want to change things, add things or plugins or anything like that, it's you do it or you make it or, or, or somebody like it does like WordPress is a lot of, I want a specific theme. I need this. I need this plugins. Like there's a lot of money that yeah. can, it can start getting expensive mm-hmm. as you complicate your WordPress, like install plugins, design, everything like that. And still because I, I, you know, Squarespace has the same thing. You start waving with the template. I'm like, well, can we put this over here? I'm like, no, the template won't allow me. Right. Same with WordPress. You're like, like, like you just described. Like, well, I want to put this this way. Like, well, this we need to redo this. This you know, on top of the back end file structure issue in mapping. Right. Well, one of one of well, the other- you can you can still do that with. Oh, sorry, miss. No. I, I, go ahead, because I think you're talking about this. I'm, I'm going to be jumping to a related Different topic. Yeah. So go ahead. All right. The dog uh, what, one thing I did notice is that uh, when I was developing a few sites on Squarespace, so you could get some of these additional things. You've mm-hmm. got to pay for it, mm-hmm. like additional templates. But for me, I have I have a lot of stuff running off of just like a couple of accounts with my web host, but I have unlimited storage and unlimited bandwidth. So why wouldn't I just, inst- I could go in and, and create a new web, you know, uh, WordPress site right now, one click install. Mm-hmm. And it would be, it would be up and running. Now the the problem with that though is is if something breaks, then yeah, I got to go in and fix it. But with Squarespace, yeah, it's I, I like that it's just it's a, uh, you know uh, one all in box kind of solution. And also um, the big thing too that I liked with Squarespace was for analytics for Google Analytics, you never update anything besides your code, like your mm-hmm. ID for your Google Analytics. Something could change in there, and you've got to know where in your template file you're, you know, in that header tag that you're going to be adding that Google Analytics tag. So mm-hmm. if you don't, then you're going to be paying somebody like me, you know, an hourly rate to go in there and make a quick change. It's going to take a couple of minutes. Yeah. But if you don't know how to do it, you're going to break your entire site. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, one, one of the other things that I do appreciate about the Squarespace option is like the way that we have the indie wrestling set up. It's a series of blogs that populate different things. So we have our um, catalog essentially is is populated through blog resources. Um, with with WordPress, you have one blog portion of it, and you have to delineate everything with tags and different content like metadata information. And then tell it what you want to populate where. Whereas this right here, if if we if we were to onboard a new wrestling company, I can create a new blog for that wrestling company so that when we are no longer working with that wrestling company, I don't have to go through and search, okay, look what are all my blogs that have this tag or this category, and then delete all of those or hide them. All I have to do is hide that entire page. Mm-hmm. So I love that aspect with regard to, to Squarespace versus WordPress um, because for me, that makes it a little more customizable. Absolutely. Well, 
on that note, it, it, the big thing that sold me, I gotta, I gotta share this story real quick. The big thing that sold me, other than every podcast I listened to was still in Squarespace, and they still do. Uh, but but <laughs> when they were first started, I remember uh, Alex Lindsay on the Mac Break Weekly was talking about, like, he's like, I would go into a restaurant, notice the place didn't have a website, make one on Squarespace in, like, five minutes, and then, like, like give it to the owner and say, here, here's this, here's the password, I think it would help you guys out, and walk away. And it's on a trial. They, they always have, like, a seven-day trial or something, right? So you can just, like, go work up a quick website and say, this is what I can do for you. Or this is this I did for you for something that's easy, like a cafe or something, right? That doesn't have that much that needs to be on a website. And then, like, I, I think this is a big small business opportunity. It has been, right? Because you can do that with just the price of the service for the most part, right? And, or if you need somebody who even, you know, because, you know, some people are just not good at, you know, computer literacy, you know, and then hire somebody to do that. And then, but even that, like, your hourly to build a Squarespace is not going to be, uh, as many hours put in as building a custom WordPress, right? So, like, it, it just, it, I think it just helps there. Helps there. So, are you going to throw in the stamps.com ad too? Or, yeah, I was, like, <laughs> I was thinking yeah. I need to grab the affiliate. Let's see if we can get an affiliate codes to throw on this, this episode for both for, for WordPress and I don't know, uh, 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 well, Squarespace and I don't know, Word, WordPress.com has got to have something too, right? Because they're basically trying to do a Squarespace kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, and we didn't even talk much about that, but I mean, really, really, WordPress.com is kind of a, Again, they it's on their server, and 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 you again. I think you kind of pay for different levels of flexibility and things like that. But I think for the most part, people want to either the install or or not. So I, I you know, and, and there's a there's a middle that that people probably want for that, right? So. If you want the most secure too, it's I mean, Squarespace. You you don't have to worry about a lot. Right. It's yeah. up to them to make sure. Right. Now, I shouldn't say that it's more secure. It's just you don't have to keep up with it. Uh, right. If you, you, you don't want to hire website. a security expert for your website, uh, then, you know, they, they, it's kind of wrapped into it. All right. Uh, I, I, I've worked on a few. I, there was one site. Uh, this is probably, I think it was around uh, 2013 or 14. Uh, a friend of mine said, hey, uh, my friend needs help with their website. And it got hacked. Uh-huh. And it was a WordPress site that just had outdated uh, plugins like there is a backdoor to one of the plugins that never got patched, Jeez. stuff like that. So I had to go in there. I I, I talked to the hosting company to find out if I could get a, a backup of it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and we went through this whole thing. But it's uh, yeah, it's something where you know they had to pay for my time to to do all the legwork for it, and then to go in there and like the make the edits was painful because it's just what they had done was just it was crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's like, do you want? Do you want to deal with that or do you, I don't want to say set it and forget it, but you know, Squarespace is, they've got teams that make sure that their stuff's locked down. Yeah. That's yeah, not saying absolutely. you still can't have a user error and screw something up and they get someone get your password, but right. there's always so much you can protect on those things, but it's, I think Squarespace is a lot more, um, I would say more proficient with security than a lot of these third party plugins that you can get because, you know, mm-hmm. they bought it to have a thousand star reviews and, yeah, that's a whole nother episode. <laughs> well, at that point, I think it's a good wrapping point there. Uh, Amanda, uh, again, check. where can people check out your wonderful websites on Squarespace and or WordPress as of this um, release? AmandaNarcissi.com or BoldPGH.com. Go check it out, Doug. InsLoveBBQ.com. That's a great example of me breaking WordPress and not just going around and fixing things because my template's a little, yeah. Data's good. Data's really good, but so is the food. I'm still playing around with that. There uh, there, there there's go. another site. If you want to see uh, a site that I did with uh, Squarespace, there's PittsburghPRGuy.com. Uh, Jonathan's a, a friend of mine. He was a colleague for a, a long time also, and uh, I helped him build. Yeah, there he is. There's his smiling face. Uh, that's something that I had set up for him really quick on Squarespace. And I use this as an example when I, other people say, Hey, what, you know, what kind of, what can you do really quick for me? I just need a presence Mm -hmm. and and it's usually a great solution. And like you said, it's, it's also cost uh, effective too, because I can set it up within like an hour Mm -hmm. or so. Absolutely. Uh, So ginslovebbq.com. 
and 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 then and then to that, I, I also want to point out again one of those that we kind of walked away from. Uh, I did I did a website. We did a documentary uh, years ago, and I, and he needed a website too for speaking and everything. But uh, somebody named Zach Gowan, the one legged wrestler, used to be in WWE uh, back in like two thousand one, two thousand two ish, I think it was. We did this for him years ago, and the great thing about this, I set this up for him, and he's he's a pretty smart, you know, pretty computer literate guy, right? And uh, and and yeah, that's him on American Ninja Warrior. Um, I haven't touched this website. He has his own shop. He has his own thing. He's he's talking about his speaking because he's a he's a a recovering uh, uh, you know alcoholic and drug addict and and does a lot of like you know speaking and youth engagement and everything like that. And so this has been like you know life coaching. You know he's involved with the the DDP yoga uh, uh, stuff. And again, like he popped up when you know the the American Ninja Warrior thing happened a few. Uh, a few years ago too so everybody kind of rediscovered him uh, publicly and and again he has just been dealing with this on his own and i have not had to you know it's kind of nice it was like you know hey here you go have, have at it uh so that's zachgowan.com we set up for him i, I messaged him once a year when i'm like hey your bill's coming up just want to make sure you're aware of it <laughs> so with squarespace because i still get the notices since i was the first setup on it so and 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 uh, well, I guess Amanda Missy, you should mention uh, pghmuseums.org, right? Yes, uh, pghmuseums.org. This was this was a fun one, and mm-hmm. I know when you guys were talking about mapping earlier, one of the ways that that we went around the mapping was to utilize Google Maps, and we did nice little embed as far as that was concerned. But the site itself, um, you know, we it, it lists various events in the Western Pennsylvania, Southwestern Pennsylvania primarily, but Western Pennsylvania area. And there you can see that we had put together a nice little Google map um, that talks about different types of events, different locations for events. Um, and not just events, it's also like historic sites and different things that that are interesting to people to, to check out and see. Um, so they're listed by, there's there's a, the calendar there that Sorg's pulling up. So that integrates and there's a bunch of information for what's happening around you. Um, so yeah, that, that was a fun little venture and much like you just described with the Zach Gowan thing, mm-hmm. we were approached to set this up so that it could be maintained by, by PGH museums, um, by volunteers. Exactly. Um, I'm, I'm part of the board over there, but I don't really do a whole lot with the website on the day to day stuff yet they know that if something happens with a site that uh, there've been a couple of times that uh, I broke this, how do I fix it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and you know, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll get that frantic text message or phone call. And usually it's a matter of, oh, okay, you just moved this block where it wasn't supposed to be. I'll move it back. Um, there was one point where somebody had deleted a page, but thankfully it doesn't delete automatically. It went to a, a holding area where before it deleted and I was able to pull it back and repopulate it. So it wasn't an issue. Um, but yeah, he, he completely maintains that. There's a couple of other people that are part of PGH museums. Amanda, I think goes in and, and updates some of that content on, on a regular basis mm-hmm. and it's just easy hands off. And then, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't show the visuals before, but, uh, there is, uh, Amanda's website there. I mean, uh, a narcissist creative, uh, I made a narcissy.com and, uh, and, uh, I don't know is there anything else I need to show here. Um, uh, of course, uh, you can see, uh, uh, if you see our awesomecast.com, that is an old WordPress. You may, in, you may even notice the old theme, the classic theme. <laughs> That's how much I, 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 I kind of want to redesign it here in the near future too. Both, both of this and the wrestling, that and the wrestling ma'am show, like be, desperately need redesigns, but I think they, that you but can, they, show, but they work. I, I think that you can show the nice sidekick media services website, yes. which is a Squarespace website. That is a, that is a nice website. One. And of course, SorgatronMedia.com is one uh, as well. Um, and, and you're stuck on me over here, so I'm going to talk. I'm stuck on you while I was typing in the thing. I need two <laughs> hands. I need to move this keyboard. Um, so yeah, Sidekick Media Services is is obviously our business end of things, uh, where, where we actually build websites for people and do things for people. Oh, there it is. There's there's the site. Um, so yeah, lots of interesting things. We have our nice little sub marketing mistakes, and you should probably avoid making um so a bunch of different things there's some of the the companies that we've worked with and done things with mm-hmm. uh so yeah it, it's our fun little little project absolutely so thank you everybody for joining us uh thank you to our esteemed panel of web webby people <laughs> i guess 
are, are we included in the spider verse? In the spider verse, the webby verse, the podcast verse. I think all of us have been involved with podcast, right? So yeah, we all have. <laughs> uh, but I think I think we were the last ones that were involved with podcast. So we're yes. only missing Katie. So uh, if I recall, but uh, thank you everybody for joining us. I uh, hope you're enjoying this. Hope you're having a good holiday. I hope it's a little extra. Uh, stuff to help maybe uh, help you with your project in um, 2022 if it's a web project or something and you're trying to decide what platform to work with. I know we didn't cover other things like there's Wix and a whole bunch of other Weebly I think I've heard of that are very kind of, I don't know, Squarespace alternative kind of stuff. And uh, and uh, yeah, some of the stuff can apply there, but also just make sure you do your research before whatever platform you do choose for your website i feel i'm trying not to roll into a sidekick media services uh at here but i feel like i am but uh but anyways thank you everybody for joining us you have been our awesome audience have a happy happy holiday this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast now find out more at sorgatronmedia.com